Good afternoon. We will be continuing our look at chemical formulas for binary ionic compounds by talking about two new things, naming ionic compounds and the stock system. So just as a reminder, binary ionic, ionic compounds are when a metal and a nonmetal combine to form a compound. All right, and what we looked at in the past is the crisscross method, where we take one cation and one anion, we can figure out its chemical formula by crisscrossing the charges. The charge of the first tells you how many you need of the second. The charge of the second tells you how many you need of the first. So in this case, Mg1, but we don't write ones, F2. Right, so that's how we figure out the formula. Now the second part right here is going to be imperative to naming. All right, please note it says the metals keep the original name. That's the first element and keeps whatever it is. And the second one, the non-metal, gets a new ending. It's replaced with IDE. So in this case, like oxygen becomes oxide, fluorine becomes fluoride. And we'll look at that. All right, so let's talk about the stock system. That's a that's a burst, all right? We use Roman numerals to indicate ion charge. Now this is looking at a lot of the elements in that transition metal. So if we look at the periodic table, and we have something like this, just as just a rough drawing, all right? We never really figured out the charges or the oxidation number for these elements. Well, the stock system is gonna help us figure that out. That's right, we're gonna now be able to make chemical formulas using these. All right, we know our Roman numerals, right? Like one, two, three, four, five, all right? And so we, we will use these to tell what charge an element has. Now, we do not use the Roman numerals for everything, all right? We do not use it for the ones that we already know. All right, so like calcium, we already know that it's a positive 2. Therefore, we do not need to write calcium Roman numeral 2. It is only for the transition metals. And specifically, we're going to use it for these right here. Okay, now for my class, uh, the periodic table already has those highlighted for you. And if you look at the little charts, you can look and see what their charges are. All right, and now some of these have multiple charges like iron has a positive two or a positive three charge copper has a positive one or a positive two mercury a positive one or a positive two and so forth okay now looking at this you could also look over on your periodic table and figure out that silver has like a positive one and so we will use roman numerals to indicate which one of these we're talking about. So there is a difference between iron two and iron three, all right? That's the charge, all right? This is a positive two, this is a positive three. All right, so this stock system is an older way of figuring out this charge you look at these right here, all right? And I want you to use the Roman numerals if it's one of these. How do we do crisscross with the Roman numerals? The good news is the, the crisscross method is done the same way. For example, if we look at iron three oxide, all right? We could go ahead and do crisscross just like we've been doing it. So iron three, as a positive three charge. Oxide, which is oxygen, has a negative two charge. So this three goes down there, this two goes down there, and what do you know? We end up with Fe2O3. The Roman numeral is the charge of the metal. Okay, that's it. That's, that's it for the stock system, all right? Um, the Roman numerals just take the brain work out of it instead of trying to use like some kind of you know detective work or special rules you just look at the Roman numeral how do you figure that out 
All right, well, let's just go over naming just again so we can make sure that we have this, okay? And now we're going to introduce the stock, stock system into the naming part. All right, so starting off, all right, starting off, we will look at the first element. The first element gets to keep its name, all right? It came first, so it says, hey, I'm going to keep my name. You just write it down with absolutely no changes. All right, but our new policy states we got to make sure if it's one of those transition metals, we got to make sure that it, it uses the Roman numerals or not. Okay, so that goes, well, it's going to take a little detective work to figure out what charge it was to make that formula. And then that is the Roman numeral that you put. All right, so our alkali metals, alkali and earth metals, they do not need Roman numerals. Just those ones that we just talked about. All right, and then the second element, all right? Just like we already said, okay, if it's not polyatomic, if it's an element, it loses its normal ending, and it uses its IE, excuse me, IDE ending. Fluorine fluoride, nitrogen nitride, Phosphorus becomes phosphide, sulfur becomes sulfide, and so on and so forth. All right, so let's go ahead and work an example out. So say I have, oh, excuse me, wrong marker right there. I have copper to nitride okay so copper symbol is cu right and i'm looking right here at this roman numeral and it says two so that means it has a positive two charge okay then i got nitride which note that's the ide ending so this is nitrogen and nitrogen if i look on my periodic table has a negative three charge Okay, so now we could do crisscross like normal. This two is gonna go down there. This three goes down there. And when I rewrite it, I get Cu3. Note, there is no plus or minus when it, be, it goes down below. N2. So that is the correct chemical formula for copper two nitride. Okay, well, if it was copper 1, so say we switch it up and we write down a copper 1 nitride, but then I would have Cu with a positive 1, nitrogen with a negative 3. Okay, the 1 goes right there, 3 goes right there, and I would have Cu3 in one, but we don't write the one. So note, the formula changes depending on which copper we're talking about. And that's why we have to keep track of the stock system. Which one are we talking about? All right, so let's briefly go through some practice problems here and see what we got. Now, I'm sorry, when I switch this over to the screen, please note that all of the numbers that should be subscript are big, but we're gonna pretend that didn't happen. Okay, so here we go. We got mercury chloride right here. This very first problem. So we got we have a chemical formula. Now we need to write it in a name. So the first one gets to keep its name. All right. However, this is one of those transition metals that we need to keep an eye on, the ones that are in the stock system. All right, so we got to figure out what mercury this is, All right? Is it mercury with a Roman numeral one or mercury with a Roman numeral two? Well, now it's going to take a little bit of detective work. This chlorine, we know, is a negative one charge. Chlorine is a negative one charge, okay? And we have two of them. So it's kind of like this side has a negative two charge. Okay, well, what is going to cancel that out? What is going to 
be opposite of negative 2? Well, then it's a positive 2. This must be a positive 2 charge over here. So that means this mercury was mercury 2. All right, now we got to name the second one right here. Chlorine is not chlorine. It's going to get that I-D-E ending. So you sim simply say chloride. Mercury to chloride. Okay, next one. Cesium and an S, which is sulfur. And cesium is not one of our uh, ones used for the stock system. So that means we could go ahead and just write this one out as normal and don't have to worry about Roman numerals. So CS is cesium. And then sulfur is going to gain its IDE form. So we're going to say sulfide. And there we go. All right, moving on to our next one. Okay, I can see that we have Fe, so this is going to be another Roman numeral one. So we got to figure out which one is it going to be. And we're going to do the same little detective work that we did for the first practice problem. Okay, I got chlorine, which is normally a negative one, and I got three of those. So it's kind of like this side over here has a negative three charge. So then this must mean that this is a positive three. So we have iron, three, and then chlorine is gonna become chloride. Okay, so that's it of going from formulas to names. Now let's go to names to formulas. All right, so our first one has no room in numerals, which means it's like the ones that we've done in the past. I got magnesium, which is going to be a positive 2. I got chlorine, which is a negative 1. All right, the 2 is going to go down here. The 1 is going to go down there. Okay, and so we have Mg1. We don't write it. Cl2. Don't forget, no pluses or minuses when they're numbers, only when they're charges up above. All right, so that's magnesium chloride. All right, now we have copper two oxide. So we have copper and it has a positive two charge. Oxygen, which is a negative two charge. And according to our rules on the crisscross, all right, when they have the same, the same charge, plus or minus two, all right, the same number, just opposites on the charge, they cancel each other out. And we could just write down CuO because it's going to be a one-to-one -one ratio, right? One copper, one oxygen because they cancel each other out. So there we go. All right, so do some practice, ask some questions, and that's it.